So welcome back friends. Today I'm gonna to try something I've never done before and that's to teach myself how to TIG weld. So a TIG welder I'm learning is a whole different animal than anything I've done before. Done quite a bit of stick welding, wire feed MIG welding, not so much, well not at all this. There's a, a couple things that take a lot of courage to share on YouTube. One is welding and two, any type of cutting down trees, <laughs> maybe shooting. If you want to bring ridicule and hatred and elitism upon your head in, in heaps, uh, just go online and share some of those things. So I want to preface this that I'm a total beginner. I've never went to welding school. Uh, I've been completely self-taught by my granddad. I've never been a great welder. I've been maybe adequate sometimes. So um, uh, just know that going into it. And any advice you can give uh, when you can see whatever, I'll, I'll try it. My first weld here uh, would be greatly appreciated, but just do understand that I'm not professing to know anything about this. Uh, I've watched Brian do it uh, for eight hours. I've watched a whole bunch of YouTube videos. I've read the manual and I'm just gonna go forward and just do the best I can. So let me show you the equipment real quick and then we'll get into it. So a MIG welder is completely different than all of the other types in that, uh, well, you can see, so this welder here, this is the one I decided to go with was the MIG 200 Square Wave by Lincoln. It had really great, uh, good reviews online. Uh, guys that use them all the time said it's a great entry. Um, I wouldn't say a starter machine, but maybe something that would be really good for a hobbyist or someone like myself that just has small projects that's not doing, doing it commercially. Um, it, it, uh, how it's different is that rather than having a wire feed right through your through your cape, you know, th through the your welder, your head. I mean, what do I, I don't even know the terminology here? A wire feed, you know, it feeds through when you pull the trigger, or a stick where you put it in and it consumes itself. This here you feed by hand, and so this uh, portion right here uh, will start the arc and then you will melt whatever material will start to puddle and you have to feed this in. So what it looks like to me is it really takes a lot of skill. It's really a, an art, maybe 50% art, 50% knowledge and understanding of metallurgy and all that. And the other thing that adds more complexity to it is that there is a foot pedal. So a foot pedal that's similar to what you find like on a sewing machine where the more you push on it, the hotter uh, you're going to burn at the end. So you have to not only be controlling this portion and the feed, but the foot pedal at the same time. So there's a lot of stuff going on. I think that the learning curve is probably pretty steep. So uh, let me show you uh, what we're gonna be welding. Let's just jump into it and just see what happens. So what I'm gonna be practicing on today is just a piece of uh, one inch aluminum bar stock. It's, it's eighth inch wall thickness. This is what we're building the bed frame out of. And this is just a cut off end. And you can see here, one thing that Brian, this is Brian's here that he's kind of taught me is that this little device here, uh, he calls it a TIG finger. And so what I saw him do is he'll wear it on his pinky finger right here like this. And then as the torch, excuse me, the torch, that's the name. So as you're using the torch right here, there's a lot of heat that comes off on your hand that gets pretty uncomfortable. And this is kind of a heat resistant material that kind of helps you keep from burning your hand as you come in here and you feed the material. So another thing that I, I've understand is really important is to make sure that, that this is clean. There's actually an oxidiz, oxidation that, uh, ought, that just kind of naturally forms on aluminum uh, that causes a problem that the welder has a difficulty getting through. So one thing that's really important with this stuff is that it's clean and that everything is prepped right. Now we're using these stainless steel brushes uh, to knock that oxidization that, that coating off there. And something that Brian said was really important was you can't cross contaminate your brushes. So he's got one marked here steel and one marked aluminum. So that I guess if you're brushing steel or cleaning it up, those little particles that stick to the brush can get in and contaminate the, the, what, you're, what you're welding. So he told me be sure to don't cross contaminate those and make sure you knock that oxidation off and that it's super clean. So another thing that appears to be pretty important is to have everything set up in a way where you're, you're pretty comfortable because you've got to manipulate that foot pedal. You've got to give yourself a nice uh, place to rest and the angle of the torch, the way you hold it, I think they said 15 degrees off of, off of 90 
is really important as well. And you've got, you got to feed in here. So it's real <laughs> close detailed work like this. Um, so being comfortable here seems to be pretty important. So I think I've got myself set up pretty well. I can access the foot pedal. So let me bring the camera over here and we'll run our first pass and uh, see what happens. One more quick thing. So the welder also requires an argon gas. So the argon gas, I believe it's called a shielding gas, is really important. Focus, focus, come on, you can do it. It's really important because the, the art cannot strike uh, it, it, it won't work in an oxygen rich environment like the we exist in so it creates a little bubble of argon around there that allows this arc to happen so that's really important so to get started uh, we'll just simply turn on the machine that should boot up and the amperage you know how much basically how much power we're putting to it is important as well it's got kind of a cool gauge over, or a really handy gauge on here for me, a beginner. It's very much appreciated. So I can look at, this is the thickness of the material that we're welding, the eighth inch, and it gives me the rough settings for the amperage. So I'm gonna go on the low side, which is 120 amps here, and that's being reflected here, and we can turn this up and change all of this. We'll start with the 120, and then see how that works. Okay, got my old person reading glasses on got my tig finger on got my ground oh man make sure that everything is looking good here okay so this rod that we're going to be using i don't even know how to hold the torch though this rod that we're going to be using here is called a filler rod so what i'll do is i'll I'll uh, strike the arc and then uh, just do the best I can here. Here we go, first time. Okay, let's take a look at this. I don't know what I'm looking at, but we'll look at it anyway. Okay, so for my first weld, I, what, I'm, what I'm thinking and what I'm seeing here just from past experiences, I wanted this black in there. I wonder if there was some contamination or maybe it's not clean enough. I don't know what causes that. But you can see here when I started, that sitting up there pretty high, I, I think that I started adding filler rod material before it was hot enough. And then as I went along, I'm getting better penetration right here, and it looks like it's widening out. I wonder if I was maybe getting sloppy with the angle of my torch. If I, if I tilt my angle too much, I, it's gonna splay or spread that out, was what I'm thinking. And then here, I didn't reduce the power and pull the torch away, and it actually burnt a hole in the material right there. So it looks to me to be too cool here, maybe some kind of close in right in there and then a bad angle and then too hot at the end so let's try it one more time and, and see if i can't improve upon that a bit all right let's take a look at this see if there's any hope so here we have three wells here was the first one What's kind of, what I'm kind of curious about is it looks like it's almost got kind of a, like a, a porous look to it, like a, like a, it's rough, like it has a texture on it. And then the same way here, so I did this weld here, uh, started off a little bit hotter before I added the filler rod, got in here, it's starting to splay out a little bit, and then of course didn't get off the heat, actually melted the corner right there. Went back and, and went in here again, looks very similar added this maybe not i don't know maybe not quite hot enough and then i slowed it down and increased the pedal full full tilt 
uh, and held it in there a little bit longer just to kind of experiment and you can see that it's maybe burned in there too hot. There's actually, it's actually flat across here. There is no hump. Imagine that there's the perfect, perfect weld is probably somewhere in between these two. And then of course you get, have a kind of a bad habit of weaving it on there and then putting too much heat on that and burning a hole in there. So that finishing is kind of tricky right there. So what I'd be curious to know, and it's also smoother here. It doesn't have as much of that texture as it kind of, a, it's like a splattering on there. And I don't know what causes that, but that doesn't, it doesn't look very good. And it's probably something wrong that I'm doing. So let me know on that. But that, uh, those are my first three TIG welds. So I'll keep practicing on this. Uh, I'll be really interested to see your comments. Uh, those of you who have experience with this, if you can give me some pointers, uh, I'd appreciate that. But I'll just keep practicing today uh, until I can get something that looks, <laughs> resembles a decent weld. But I'm actually quite pleased. It's, it's a really, it's an enjoyable process. Welding uh, with a, a MIG, with a wire feed, it has never particularly been enjoyable to me because it's, everything is so hot and you have the sparks flying around. This is really clean and tidy. It's not a, it's not a super fast method, but you can weld um, really, I guess, delicate things. It, and not only just aluminum, but you can do chromoly, you can do steel, you can even do titanium from what I understand. Interesting, let me share a story with you. That This is Brian shared the story with me about titan welding titanium during the Cold War. So apparently uh, the Americans, and, I, and I'm getting this secondhand, I may have this wrong, but I think, you'll get, I think I'll have kind of the gist of the story. The Americans were trying to figure out a way to weld titanium on a large scale uh, for nuclear submarines. Um, if they, they thought, I guess they thought if they could make a titanium submarine, being it would be so much lighter than steel, uh, that it would, of course, be faster uh, and, and a greater weapon of war. And I guess they abandoned it. I don't know if they couldn't figure out the welding technology or, or the problem was, was shielding, having an, ar the, an argon shield uh, big enough to deal with this. And, and again, secondhand. Uh, but the Russians, they actually figured out a way to do it according to Brian. So what they did, and this is so typical of the Russians, you know, Americans have a tendency to, to overcomplicate things. You know, we know the story of the space pen, right? We spent millions and millions of dollars, the Fisher Company, trying to figure out how to pressurize a ballpoint pen so it would write in zero gravity, and, and I don't even have any idea how much they spent on that. The Russians took a different approach. They, they sent the, at the cosmonauts up with a pencil. <laughs> so it kind of gives it goods into the mindset of the two different types of cultures. And so what the Russians did is that they built an entire uh, a, a room or a shop and they, and they sealed it and it was a hundred percent argon atmosphere. So that when the welders went into weld, they had to be, have some sort of a, a breathing apparatus, a self-contained breathing apparatus. But because the entire facility was all a hundred percent argon atmosphere, they could weld and they built this titanium submarine, allegedly, according as the story goes. I thought that was really kind of interesting. So, all right, we got lots of stuff. There's one thing I want to share with you. Hold on. Coming up soon, the most requested, <laughs> the most requested video. I have acquired, I purchased on Amazon with my own money, uh, the cheapest gas powered chainsaw on Amazon. I think it came into $119 and it's supposed to have a 22 inch bar. I haven't opened it yet. So we'll open it together. We'll gas it up. I've got a, a big snag that needs to come down and we'll try it out and find out what a $119 Amazon chainsaw <laughs> is, is actually like. So stay tuned for that. All right. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next video.